Rock and Roll Geek Show 1,109. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, right. it's the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Saturday, January 8th, 2022, and it is 6.55 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. Well, I'm finally finished with my top 10 of 2021, my top 10 albums of 2021. It was, I got to tell you, this was probably the most difficult year to put this list together a because I probably put it off for too long B because a lot of albums came out this year, even though we were in lockdown and all that shit, uh, a lot of albums came out and it was very difficult putting them into a, uh, to my favorite 10. I had, I made a long list and I couldn't narrow it down to 10. So as, as usual, I got a lot of ties in there and, um, yeah, I know it's going to be a bullshit list, but man, I did my best. I'm exhausted. I feel like I have taken a <clears throat> final exam in uh, junior high school or something like that. And uh, Was that the last year of high school I was in, junior high? I don't know. Probably not. No, I finished high school, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, but I, that's the plan today, to do a rock and roll geek show. Uh, top 10, give or take four or five extras all right and i got a lot of i have a lot of uh honorable mentions as well and let me see i have uh i have like shit i have like seven honorable mentions and i have a bunch of ties so it's gonna be a uh probably a disjointed mess of a rock and roll geek show i am already violating dave jackson from the school of podcasting's um number one rule to get uh to avoid from to get li- new listeners he says get right to the point get right to the show get right on your list well that's probably why i don't have as many listeners as i sh- as i would as i should but uh i got to do it my way dave jackson i'm sorry you have a great podcast and gives great uh, advice but i just can't do it that way i got to uh I got to be me. <laughs> All right, I don't, what am I saying? I should do it his way, but I, for some reason, I just can't. I just, uh, I just can't. So before we get into the, All right, here's what we'll do. We will do one song and then we will come back and uh, thank some donors and do some other things. I got a Joe Paul that came over. My bodyguard came into San Francisco on, um, I don't know, he was here this week, but we went out to dinner on Thursday. Me, him, Chiaki, and my son Brian and uh, went to Hot Pot. And I got that to talk about. Uh, Joe Paulak called in and left an audio comment, probably telling me how much of a shitty time he had. I don't know. I will find out because I don't listen to these things before the show starts. But uh, all right. So I got top 10 albums of 2019. Three-way tie for, for number uh, 10. I got, it's just going to be about a lot of bands. I could just couldn't narrow it down to 10, damn it. So coming in at Tide at number 10, Wayward Sons put out an album this year called Even Up the Score. Here's the problem with a lot of the albums that, I, that, I, uh, that are in the top 10. All the songs aren't great. Some of the bands, more than one band, the vocals got on my nerves a little bit uh music was great on a lot of the bands uh well anyway the the what am i i don't know what i'm saying wayward sons good album is it a great album no but there are some good pop song good catchy rock songs on it 
really good sound, and I like the band. They're on a couple, on several other people. I, there's a list on a Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group. As, as you know, I didn't create it, but I do approve people who just got to answer two questions so that I know you are not one of those pop-up COVID testing sites that are uh, scamming people. Then you're not a real tell. All right, enough of that. So on several people had uh, Wayward Sons on it. Let's see. Who else has Wayward Sons? Uh Let's see. Not Earl Inf. Does he have Earl Inf? No, I don't think. Mm, Sandy Hyde does. Uh, some other people do. I, I, there's a long list of of of, um, of comments. I got to look through this. This. I will come back and. If you have them on your list, you know who you are, friends. This is going to be disjointed. So what happens, everybody on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group, not everybody, but a lot of people put their top ten list, which I asked for, and thank you for doing that, friends. And a lot of people put them on there, and uh, several people had this band, Wayward Sons. This song that I picked, probably my favorite song on the album, is called Bloody Typical. Coming in at number ten. On the Rock and Roll Geek Show Facebook, whatever. Sons, bloody typical. Also on that uh, 
on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group, Jim S., the Rock and Roll Toothbrusher, has Wayward Sons on it, on his list. Also, I think Jesse Dinos does as well. And uh, Sandy Hyde, maybe a couple other people have it on their list. But that's a good song. The last album I like a lot better, but still worthy of, of at least a tie for top ten. So Joe Pollack, my bodyguard, came in on Thursday, and he just left me an audio comment today. So I am dying to hear what his audio comment is about because uh, when he was here, um, somehow the topic of uh, Karova came up, and the wife came in and uh, started giving her opinions, and it was a little bit... uh, uncomfortable to say the least so here's joe paul pardon me i'm burping up my i just opened the fourth tecate of the day so i'm burping up the fourth tecate joe paul like my bodyguard hello friend hey michael butler joe pollock hey, germantown joe. wisconsin hey, joe. Joe. how the hell are you doing i'm super great couldn't be better thanks for asking well, that's that's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to call in and uh-huh. say thank you. Uh, appreciate your hospitality and, and hosting me. Uh, oh, uh, he came bearing gifts too. He brought me two thirty packs of Tecate. Fortunately, they weren't they weren't uh, refrigerated already because I had nowhere to put them all. But I did put thirty of them in my little refrigerator right next to me in my office. The other thirty pack is still in my garage. And he also brought a nice bottle of wine over for the wife. <coughs> We had a good dinner. We went out to Hot Pot. I'll, I'll let him talk. Tell maybe he's telling the story here. Past week, it was great to to see you again. Great to meet Shiaki. Uh, great to meet your wife Tina and uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and your uh, stepson <laughs> Brian. Brian as well. So that was really cool. Uh-huh. Great to break bread again. Get out uh, and be with members of the rock and roll geek community. So thank you. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy your Tecates. I am enjoying it right um, now, friend. I was going to post this in the Facebook group, but I wanted to call in because I know there's people who listen to the podcast who are not in the Facebook group or on Facebook. But we had talked a little bit about, you know, it would be so cool uh, to get everybody together, or as many as we can, you know, whether that be five or ten or that would twenty be nice. or whatever, somewhere this year. So I guess my— Here's an idea. We could all meet at the mountain house in um, Northern California. We'll come in, in the springtime or fall. We can all, if there's room for everybody to camp out, there's, there's probably not room for a bunch of people in the house. There's room for a few. Uh, but we could all pitch tents <laughs> in my, uh, my property and uh, have a big rock and roll geek uh, outdoor sausage party. All right, back to you, Joe Pollack challenges to the group out there is where can we meet up uh, as a group uh, or as many as possible, uh, maybe around a show or something like that, That'd whether it be, be a Butler's gig in San Francisco, which uh, would be really cool to see, or you know, somewhere else in the Midwest where it's kind of centrally located or, or whatever. But I'd, I'd really like to hear some ideas. Vegas on, on... is a central hub. Everybody can fly into Vegas. That'd be good too, but... Uh... I love your idea, Joe. That we could do because this is a this is a cool community, and um, you know it's fun to get together and hang out and shoot the shit. I don't know. I had a, a ton of laughs the other night, so uh, it was great. So, a I recommend everybody if you're out in the Bay Area, uh, look up Michael. Yes, and, look uh, me up, friends. And, uh, we'll go out and have you know, some food. break bread or whatever you want to do. Hang out. Uh, that was cool. Um, but more than that, you know, uh, is like I said, a great community and it's awesome to get together. So I know back in what, 2020, we had talked about doing something in Texas around a, a stars and, uh, uh, show like show that was out there. So anyway, uh, that's all I got. Just quick one. Thanks again. It was awesome seeing you. Uh, and as always stay frosty, Stay frosty, Joe Pollock. Thank you for calling in and thank you for meeting me, uh, we went to a place, we went to an all-you-can-eat hot pot, all-you-can-eat and drink, all the all the food and drinks you can drink, including Sapporo beer and sake and I think red wine, too. <clears throat> uh, so I had quite a few uh, Sapporo beers, and we pigged out. So it was a good time. Thank you, Joe Pollack. All right, before we continue on the list, I should thank some people who donated to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Now, there were some honorable mentions um, 
Let's go through the honorable mentions. So, what didn't make the top ten? Uh, Sammy Yaffa's new album. A little bit. Some other people said this too. It's a little. It, Sam Yaff is one of my favorite bass players in the world, and he's a great, fantastic bass player, and he's probably a better songwriter than me, too. But uh, the album didn't make my top ten list. It came close, but didn't quite make it. Also, uh, Exodus' new album, really good. For a metal album, it's really good. Did not make the top ten list. Some of these albums, because I didn't get a long enough chance to listen to them, and because so many albums... I get. So many albums came out, and people send me albums, and I don't. I get so busy working my ass off, I don't. I don't have a chance to listen to them all. But um, the Exodus album is honorable mention. New Jesse Mallon double LP was also came very close to being in the top ten, but uh, some of the songs just didn't cut it for me. Uh, new Lucero, a little bit disappointed in the New Lucero, but. Uh, because it was a lot, a lot of uh, synthesizers on it, and uh, I don't have anything against synthesizers. Just the songs weren't up to to the top ten for me. But it barely missed. Amel and the Sniffers. Some people sent me those. I think Eric Rock and Roll Pleaf sent me Amel and the Sniffers, and I know a lot of people love that band, including Casey, Australian punk rock band. Came close. I like the spirit. I like the girl's voice. The songs are kind of a little too generic punk rock for me, so it didn't quite make my top ten list. Uh, Damon Johnson's new album, which was called uh, Battle Lessons, I think. Almost made it. There's some decent songs on there, but uh, the guy's voice, like a lot of these albums, even that, that even did make the top ten, his voice... A little too pretty for me. Songs are okay. A uh, band called Black Sheriff from Cologne, Germany. I just now started listening to this album today, and it probably would have made my top ten. Kurt Crawford sent me a bunch of uh, bunch of music, and some of it made my top ten. If I would have listened to this band from Cologne, Germany, Black Sheriff, it probably would have gotten a higher score, but we'll give it an honorable mention. And while we thank the donors, why don't we play some Black Sheriff in the background here? Okay, Black Sheriff, Diane. Do you know the name? I found out later. She was asking All right, thank you to everybody who donates to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. It's a value for value. Joe Pollack on Patreon, patreon.com slash rnrgeek. $16.66, and I've neglected to give him credit last episode. He sent me a $60 Apple Pay donation, which I totally forgot. I apologize, Joe Paul. I got room in my wagon, just right outside. Thank you to Dan Garawan, $15. Thank you to Tim Shaw, $15. Kirk Crawford, $12.77. Joseph Coyne, $10. Michael Street, $7.50. Steve Scholar, $6.65. Dave Slusher, my podcast mentor and co-host of Mad at Dad. Mad at Dad is dead. Long live Mad at Dad. $5.55. Brad Schultz, $5. Brad Schick, $5. Brian Springer, $5. Chiaki Hinohara, my good friend. $5. Japanese Metalhead Show and Metal Moment Podcast. Cole Thornton, $5. Dan McBride, $5. Eric Klein, $5. Fred and Jenny Bunky, $5. Grand Fakwa, $5. James Shapiro, $5. Jamie Jefford, $5. Justin Lefkowitz, $5. Martin Clawley, $5. Michael Brown, one of my oldest friends in the world and the guy who I went to all the concerts with when I was a kid, $5. Paul Smith, $5. Robert Harvey, $5. Steve T. Steve Trice, $5. 
Ted Wilbrecht, $5. Tony Field, $5. Mike Hellyer, four pounds. Garrett Coward, $3. Mike Dixon, $3. Chad Burns, $2.50. Paul Rube, $2.25. Adrian Boshron, Boshrock on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group. Which I did not, you get the drift. Uh, he donated two dollars. Bruce McMillan, two dollars. Eric Stowell, two dollars. Matthew Hunt, two dollars. Paul Shanahan, two dollars. Paul Underwood, Maker of Underwood Fine Barbecue Sauce, two dollars. Eric the Rock and Roll Plea, one forty-two. Three legs, four wheels. Amy Bowen, Arnie Stash, Corey Kohler, John Richardson, and Mark Mazze, all one dollar on patreoncom slash geek. Thank you to everybody who donated on Patreon. John Morgan, $100. Also, $100 birthday and another $100. John Morgan, if you accidentally sent me too much money, send me an email, Rock and Roll Geek, and I'll refund if you accidentally sit, hit send three times. But it's appreciated, friend. Save the show this month. Rodney Cross, $100, and another $100 for my birthday. Same goes to you, Rodney Cross, if you sent too much by accident. Michael Cranston, $100 birthday donation. Shinbone Star, $100. Cheers for all that you do, friend of the show, Shinbone Star. Hope to have you down here in 2022 for a DAD show. Michael Street, $60 birthday donation. Uh, another song. Uh, how about... Oh. One You Love from Black Sheriff. The Black Sheriff album is called Time to Burn. I'll let it roll. Michael Street, $60 birthday donation. Chris Capel, the rock and roll copywriter, $60. Douglas Free, $60 birthday donation. Ralph Miller, friend of the show and friend of mine, $60 birthday donation. I guess I got to hit play. Oh, dogs are coming through. Hold on. I just want to be the one you love. I just wanna Ralph Miller, $60 birthday love. donation. Tim Shaw, $60 birthday donation. Elodie Johns, $50 birthday. Kurt Crawford, $50. Adam Brichet, $35. Ugh. Pardon me, I'm burping on the spine. Ticate. Close the door now. See if I can get this done before the song's done. Adam Bruchet also $25 birthday donation. Richard Fusey, $12.12. Rush donation. 21, excuse me, 21.12. Come on. Richard Strong, $20. Douglas Free, $20. Greg Broker, $20 birthday donation. Richard Fusey, another $12.55. BJ Lisko, $10. Jeff and Sherry Thielalalalicky, $10. Dave Jackson in the School of Podcasting, who I'm breaking all of his rules, $10. Thank you, Dave Jackson. Dave Franco, $10. James Venters, $10. Todd Cunningham, friend of mine and friend of the show, $10. Jason Shepard, $10. Blake Johnson, $10. Ralph Miller, friend of mine and friend of the show, $10. Richard Fuse. Oh, it's wait a minute. I got Richard Fuse down in two, one too many times. Let me delete that. Nicholas Sandemo, $6.66. He says, spend it all on Tecates, please. Will do, friend. Jennifer Wilbrecht, $5. Jace Lesniewski, $5. Christopher Del Grande, $5. John Tennis, $5. Benjamin Muller, $5. Sigmund Heidacher, $5. Robert Scott, $5. Peter Spark, $5. Andrew Howell, $5. Gerald Carroll, $5. Greg Long, $5. Eric Lynch, $5. John Offenlock, $5. Robert Giglio, $5. Brett Garski, $5. Keenan O'Meara, $5. John Skiller, $5. Dale Roller, $5. Deborah Dreyfus, if that's your real name, $2. Jason Wendleton, $2. Vincent Crimmy, $2. Brian Gradage, William Moffat, Lassie Sattlethagen, Adam Brichet, and Stephen Mascord, all $2. Thank you, everybody who donates to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. It is a labor of love and a value for value. 
So please, if you get any value out of this, please help me out, friends. I made it. That Black Sheriff is pretty good. I'm going to have to give that a stronger listen. I just, I went, when I was uh, looking through the everybody else's top 10 list today, when I was, I was frantically putting this episode together, it was really difficult, man. Uh, some people had, I noticed that um, Kirk Crawford had it in his, in his top 10, and I said, oh, fuck, I forgot, I forgot about Black Sheriff. So I had to go, I went and listened to it today and it's not, I didn't give it enough time to actually put it in there, but it, it's a pretty strong album from what I've heard. And uh, also I saw uh, that he had Grand Royale on his list and I think a couple other people had Grand Royale as well. And I, oh my God, Grand Royale, I completely forgot about that album. So I listened to that when I was walking the dogs today and that album's good too. The only, it's, it's in the, Tied for top for number ten, a three way tie. The only reason it's not higher because the songs are really good. The singer, his voice gets a little grating after a while, but it's a quality album. And this is my favorite song in the album. It's called "Stay and Dry." They have, I think, Nikki Anderson from the Helicopters produced this album. I could be wrong, but they have something to do with the Helicopters, and I think. Dragon might have played on uh, one or two of these songs, or might have sang, I think he did a, uh, sang vocals on one of the, or background vocals on one of these songs, but not this one. This song is called Stay and Dry. The album is called Carry On. Another Swedish band, Grand Royale, tied, three way tie for number 10 on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Top 10, give or take, five or six for 2021. <laughs> There you go. Tied for number 10, Grand Royale. Uh, 
Kirk Crawford had that on his list, and a couple more people had it on their list as well. Let's see. I'm trying to look here. Uh, I could spend all day looking, but uh, I it's a lot. A lot of people commented, and uh, I don't want to bore you with me looking because I should have had this more prepared. But as usual, I didn't. All right. Also, number ten, three way tie. Steve Conte, Bronx Cheer is the name of his album. Um, quality album. Steve Conte, one of really good songwriter. The only thing, the only reason it's not higher up on my list, it's a little, uh, little Bruce Springsteen-y on some of the songs, but there are some quality songs as well. Dog Days of Summer is the song I picked. Steve Conti's new album, Bronx Cheer. He's supposed to be coming on and doing a track by track. We'll see if that happens or not. With the Omicron and everything, it's got everybody freaked out. So, uh, Steve Conti, tied at number 10, Dog Days of Summer. is called Bronx Cheer. All right, number nine. Another tie for number nine. Two-way tie for number nine. Jason Ringenberg. Uh, the album's not really that rock and roll of an album. The album's called Rhinestone, but I love Jason Ringenberg so much, and this album I really, really like, even though it's not really a rock and roll album. Oh, there is some rock and roll. You know, it's kind of a country rock, but... Something about Jason Ringenberg, uh, see, as you know, singer for the Jason and the Scorchers. Everything seems to come from that guy's heart, and there doesn't seem to be anything phony about that guy. And I really, really love him. And this song, the album's called Rhinestoned. Tied for number nine, this song is called Keep That Promise. Can't up all your promises I've 
on me. So now you're telling me that you're giving up your cheating ways. And you'll do anything, anything to make me stay. you can listen to Jason Ringenberg and not put a smile on your face because that guy every see, everything I watch from him or hear from him is always seems so positive and, and even if the songs are negative there's a positivity about it and it always makes me always puts me in a good mood like it's kind of like when you hear oh shit dogs are coming hold on <sighs> Joe Pollack you saw the dog superhighway in action All right. All right. Yeah, I really like that Jason Ringenberg <sighs> puts a smile on my face every time. If you haven't heard that Farmer Jason Children's stuff he did, really good several years ago. Jason Ringenberg, what a talent. All right. Also tied for number nine uh, from the UK, the professionals, Paul Cook, Steve Jones, no longer in the band, but. Uh, it's the professionals, and uh, I think some of the guys from the Yo-Yos might be in there. Uh, I'm probably wrong about that. If you're in the U.K., don't ch- chastise me. But Toshi, the guy who played in Hey Hello, uh, Ginger's band, Japanese guy, great bass player. He's also playing some guitar. He's in, he's in the video of this song. Uh, I think Rich Jones might be on a couple songs. or No, not Rich Jones, but um, Chris Catalyst, I think, is on, might be on this song as well. Spike Me Baby, good punk rock album, catchy tunes. The album is called Snafu. Here is Spike Me Baby from The Professionals. Don't 
professional snafus. Blake Johnson also has that on his list. Maybe a couple other people, too. All right, we're at number eight on the Rock and Roll Geek 2021 long-awaited top ten episodes of, or episodes, top ten albums of 2021. And again, the dogs are coming through. Hold on. Come on, let's go. Come on in, Stella. Now, Dave Jackson would have said, edit that out. And I probably should, but uh, being the lazy podcaster I am, <sighs> too much trouble, Dave, Dave Jackson. Sorry, friend. All right, number eight. On my top ten of 2000, give or take five or six or seven, on the top, tw- top ten albums of 2021. Let's see, we're at number eight. Three-way tie. Steve Cohen sent me this band, and they're probably, I'm sure they're on his top 10 list. This album is really good. Again, but the vocals, something about the vocals on this album. The girl is a, it's a girl singer. I don't know what her name is. She's a great singer. She's got a fucking fantastic voice. But something about her seems a little, I don't want to say contrived, but it seems, uh, I don't know. She seems like she's trying a little hard to be Janis Joplin, but she's but she still has a fantastic voice. So, the singer for Damn Truth, don't take that as a put down because I think you're a fantastic singer and a great performer. I watched a video for um, I watched a video for this song, and she's a really good performer. And she's cute too. Well, she's better than cute. She's super hot, but, uh, and the band is really, really good. Rocking band. The guitar player is a badass guitar player. Whole band's badass, including her, but all right, I've said enough. I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. The damn truth from, I think they're from Montreal, Quebec tied for number eight. I think I have a three way tie again for number eight. The Damn Truth, this song is called Tomorrow.
There you go. The damn truth. I'm looking at my list here, and I've got it all. I wrote down the list, and it's all fucked up because I got way too many songs on my top ten. What a mess! What a mess! But I like all these albums, so I got more ties than I I originally planned. Also tied for number... Where are we, where are we at here? Are we at number eight? Yes, also tied at number eight, Weezer. Now... <clears throat> Uh, Joe Pollack has Weezer on his list. Uh, so, several people on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group have Weezer. Uh, uh, David Shaw has him on there. Uh, uh, Joe Pollack. I'm pretty sure Sandy Hyde has him on there too. A lot of people do. But most of them have OK Human on there. Some people have Van Weezer. They put, I'm burping up this fine Modelo, or excuse me, Tecate, courtesy of Joe Pollack. Most people have Van We or most people have OK Human on there. They put out two albums this year. Oh, the dogs are coming through again. In or out? Decide and stay. Are you not coming back in? Today? All right. Now. <clears throat> I listened, I've listened to both these albums a lot. Uh, okay, Human, this song, I'm going to play one song from each of these albums because I guess they could be kind of considered a tie, but overall, I think Van Weezer is a better album, although this, this song from Okay, Human is one of we one of my favorite songs from Weezer. So we'll play that first. This is called All My oh, Favorite oh, Songs. This is the live version because the... The uh, OK Human version, he it's pretty much it's pretty much Rivers Cuomo. He got him he got himself a Mellotron or something for Christmas or last year or something. But he's playing with the Mellotron most of the album, so a lot of it sounds like the Beatles when they got the Mellotron. But this song, I'm playing a live version because this is how this song should sound on OK Human. If if the rest of the song, if the rest of the album, if two more songs were as good as this one, I would have probably put it above um, Van Weezer. Van Weezer is number eight, but I'm going to play this one anyway. I'm going to give this one an honorable mention because this song is so great. All my favorite songs are slow and sad. All my favorite people make me mad Everything that feels so good is bad, bad, bad All my favorite songs are slow and sad I don't know what's wrong with me Stay home, cause I need a friend when I take a walk. I like spacing out when somebody talks. I wanna be rich, but I feel guilty. I fall in love with everyone who hates me. All my favorite songs are slow and sad.
right. OK Human is not on my top 10 list, but that song is a great Weezer tune. I, I like that song better than I like any song on Van Weezer, but Van Weezer's got a better sound. It's got more rocking guitars, and the songs are pretty much all catchy on Van Weezer. And here's the one I picked from Van Weezer. Tied at number eight, three-way tie with Dan Truth and one other band. Here is one more hit from Van Weezer. Tied at number eight, three-way tie. Also tied at number eight. I know this is a lame way to do a top ten, but I, it was too difficult for me to narrow it down to just ten. It happens like that every year. So we're calling it, let me see, how many do I have on the list here? It'll be my top ten, give or take. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give or take eight. <laughs> oh, top 18. All right. Also tied at number eight, Alice Cooper of Detroit Stories. A lot of people had this on their list as well. It's a decent, as far as Alice Cooper albums go, later Alice Cooper albums, this one's way higher up than any of the last several. This is probably the best one since uh, Dirty Diamonds or um, Eyes of Alice Cooper. I, I, uh, Eyes of Alice Cooper, I really, really like a lot. It would have been higher up on my top ten if they, that would have came out this year. There's a lot of covers on this. Not, not a lot, but there's a few covers on this album. This is one of them. 
There's some songs that uh, have the guys in the original group, which those are good. There's some, a lot of that original Alice Cooper group sound is on this album, which is why it's in my top ten. Normally, an Alice Cooper album probably wouldn't make it to the top ten, but I like I like the sound on this album a lot. The 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 vibe, as they say, as as uh, Scott Weiland would say, the vibe on this album is good. This song is my favorite song on the album, and it's one of my favorite songs of the year. It's not really, it's not really the sound that you would recognize from Alice Cooper, but this song is so great. It's called Our Love Will Change the World. I'm going to end up doing my top 10 singers uh, that are alive today. And Alice Cooper is going to be on that list. I don't think he gets the credit he deserves for being the, the quality singer he is. He's a really good singer. Listen to his voice. Next time you listen to something like Under My Wheels or something like that, listen to Alice Cooper's voice. Pay close attention. The guy is a great singer. And that song... He sounds great on it. It's a great tune, too, a great pop tune. So, Alice Cooper, number eight, Detroit Stories, tied for number eight, along with Weezer and and uh, The Damn Truth. When all, when these bands are tied, when, when, I, when I tie these albums, like 
uh, Dan Truth, Weezer, and Alice Cooper. I like those three albums probably equally the same. That's why they're tied. <laughs> Makes sense, right? I guess. So now we brings us to number seven. It's a two-way tie. I like both these albums probably about the same. They're both decent albums. They're, they're quality, both quality albums. Tied at number seven. Where am I here? Tied at number seven. Ricky Warwick put out an album called When Life Was Hard and Fast. I like this album a lot. There's some really good songs on it. And Ricky Warwick, I, I've said the story about being on stage. When I, when I played with Ginger down in L.A., Ricky Warwick got up and played Sick of Drugs. And I was doing the sound check. And I could not believe I was on stage doing a sound check with the great Ginger Wilder and Ricky Warwick. And tears <laughs> started welling up in my eyes. I had never been so happy in my life when I was doing that. Why did I say that? I don't know, but uh, Ricky Warwick, I think the guy's a major talent. The song is called When Life Was Hard and... The, the album's called When Life Was Hard and Fast. This song is called Fighting Heart. <laughs> Never blessed with common sense All that blood income, no regrets Well, hey, you're no angel yourself My bad Another change of loneliness also has that on his list and several other people have that on his list also number where, where are we here on the list i got another dog coming in i'm not answering the door i'm sick of getting up and letting these fucking dogs in tied for number seven joe paul like my bodyguard has this on his list uh 
I think he might be the only other one. Billy F. Gibbons, one of the greatest living guitar players that we have with us today. Way better. Actually, I loved his last solo album as well, but this solo album is even better. His guitar playing is so fucking good on this. I could do without Matt Sorum's. Matt Sorum is a powerhouse drummer. It's it's Ricky. It's uh, Billy F. Gibbons, Matt Sorum, and another guy who's playing bass. A three piece. Every song in this album is good, and the guitar playing is just fucking fantastic. I could do without Matt Sorum's drumming. He's a great drummer, but something is. <sighs> He's a real solid, hard-hitting drummer, but something about his drumming it just doesn't blow me away. But I like this album a lot. It's called Hardware, tied with Ricky Warwick. This song is called More, More, More from Billy F. The great Reverend Billy F. Gibbons. And by the way, the guy's hot sauce the best hot sauce you can get, hands down. She gave it all back I want more I want more yeah. She puts the love on me fast Like a prison break There ain't no turning back When she starts moving that way She keeps me hanging on tight And it's all I can take From falling off the edge When the ground starts to shake I want more That's good. That guitar playing is fucking badass. All right, that brings us to number six on the top ten, give or take seven or eight, on the Rock and Roll Geek. Michael Butler's Rock and Roll Geek Show, 2021 top albums of the year. A band, another band from Sweden, Turn this this band. I believe Kurt Crawford also turned me onto this band, and they're probably on his top ten list as well as as they are. Uh, I believe Jim S. The Rock and Roll Toothbrushers. This band is called Deadlights. They remind me. This is another one of those bands. The sing the vocals is the only thing that doesn't really do it for me. Uh, he's a great singer, probably a little bit too great. They remind me of a. Uh, 
more hard rock or metal version of the helicopters. The band is called Deadlights. The song I'm gonna the album is called Band is, is the band oh no, wait a minute. The band is not called Deadlights, you fucking dumbass. The band is called Liar Thief Bandit. Oh, geez, what an idiot. The band is called Liar Thief Bandit. The album is called Deadlights. There is a band called Deadlights. I, I guess I can use that as an excuse for making a mistake. Or I can ex- use the excuse that I'm five Tecates in. But the album is called Liar Thief Bandit. The album is called Headlights. The song I'm going to play for you is called Feather. <laughs> That's good. If you don't like that, I don't know what to tell you, friends. That is rocking. All right. Also tied for number six. One of the most prolific guys on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group, and it's on probably everybody else's list as well. Sandy Hyde, he put out an album called Dirt uh, by his band Dirtbag Republic. He's got several, uh, I think, projects, but... Dirt Rap, Dirt Bag Republic. He put out an album called Tear Down Your Idols. This album is really good. Tied for number six with Liar Thief Bandit. Sandy Hyde and Dirt Bag Republic. I should probably get Sandy Hyde to come on the show sometime and talk rock. Uh, Joe Paul like suggested that to me, and uh, it's a good suggestion. So um, maybe I'll get Sandy Hyde on and we'll talk rock. He probably would talk. He probably will. Uh, Put me to shame with his rock knowledge. The guy is responsible for turning a lot of people on to the rock, on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group to some really great bands. 
Song I'm going to play from the album Tear Down Your Idols. Tied at number six. Dirtbag Republic. Here is Main Objective. Bad Republic featuring the great Sandy Hyde on lead vocals and probably main songwriter as well. All right, that brings us to number five. No ties on number five. This is one band. The band is, this is on a lot of people's lists as well. It's on mine. Number five, Street Walking Cheetahs. The, the album's called One More Drink. You know, I, I had Frank Meyer on the show. I've known him for a long time. Done several show, done a lot of shows with uh, American Heartbreak back in back in the day, as they say. Uh, broke it down to two songs. I see between Bad Vacation and We Are the Ones We've Been Waiting For. I think I'm going to play the more pop one. This is We Are the Ones We've Been Waiting For. One more drink. Number five on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook. <sighs> the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook. No. Number five on the Rock and Roll Geek Top 10 Albums of 2021. That's a mouthful. Street Walking Cheetahs. <laughs>
to help just you and me. I'll swim a thousand miles with my broken bones. Take you to an island and build you a home. Several people had that album on their list as well. Street Walking Cheetahs. That is a great album. All right. That brings us to number four on almost everybody's list. Not everybody's, but most people's. At least if not, it's probably an honorable mention. Anytime Ginger Wildheart puts out an album, it's probably in my top ten because you know how I feel about the guy's songwriting. He's just... This is one of the best songs. Well, the album's called 21st Century Love Songs. This is one of the best songs that came out in 2021. It's called Sleep Away. Little mouse fart. Can you die with this? I guess we're gonna find out It ain't stopped me moving 
after that one well that brings us to the last three the top three let me, let me hold on i got a roadcaster here with the sound hold on let me start that over okay. that brings us to the top three of the rock and roll geek f- <laughs> wait a minute take three that brings us to the top three of the rock and roll geek show 2021 top 10 give or take seven or eight albums of 2021 all right kill it okay all right number three also sits by itself at number three the band the darkness motor heart not their best album but definitely not Definitely in, in five in, friends. Five Tecates in. And I'm starting to uh, slur the words. Definitely <laughs> not. Th- I don't know what I'm saying. Darkness. Motorheart is the name of the album. The song I picked, could have picked any songs because I like the whole album. Oh, actually, I got. It. I did a track by track. I don't think I like every song, but I don't think I gave any zeros. I like this song a lot. This song is called "Nobody Can See Me Cry."
There you go. Number three, the darkness. Motor heart. All right. Number two, it's a two way tie for number two. I'm going to close the door again. These dogs are coming in and out. Oh, so unprofessional of me. I really need to get my producer on the other side of that window to uh, do something with these dogs. All right. Two way tie for number two. This top three, these three albums, top to bottom, pretty much great albums. This band is also from Sweden. One of the worst band names in the history of band names. But this album is a power pop, great album. I was going to say masterpiece, but I don't want to say masterpiece. But it is a fucking great album. Top to bottom, every song in this album is good. The band is called Velvet Insane. I could have picked any song from this album, but I picked this one, and they are all good. If you like pop music, this band is so good. The Velvet Insane, this song is called, well, the album is called Rock and Roll Glitter Suit from Sweden. Velvet Insane, this song is called Velvet Tongue. Velvet Insane. That singer reminds me of the singer for Against Me. I like that guy's voice a lot. I like the singer for Against Me's voice too, Laura Jane Grace. All right, that brings us to also number two. 
My favorite band in the world, you know who they are. I don't need to tell you who of this show, you know that Cheap Trick is the greatest rock and roll band in the world, and Robin Zander is the greatest lead singer in the world, and that song is fucking great. <sighs> what could possibly be better than Cheap Trick in Another World in 2021 on Michael Butler's top tw- 10 list? Give or take seven or eight. Well, a band from Switzerland... A punk rock band from Switzerland called the Bitch Queens. This album has, as they say, as Richard Fusay says, it's my wheelhouse. It's got attitude. Every song is catchy as hell. It's got humor. Every song has a good sense of humor. It's got angst. It's got rocking guitars. It's got great vocals. And most important of all, it's got great songs. The album is called Custom Dystopia from the Bitch Queens. My number one album of 2021. The reason it's number one, first of all, it's got my favorite song of the year. And how could this song be better than In Another World from Cheap Trick? That song fucking was great. (sighs) In Another World Reprise, excuse me. Bitch Queens, Custom Dystopia. It 
remind me a little bit of Turbo Negro. They're from Switzerland. I think they're from Switzerland. And this album, their last album was even better than this one, I think. Or it's pretty, maybe not quite as, it's, as, it's up there. This album, I've played this album more, this is why it's number one. I have played, I've listened to this album more than any other album album that came out this year i probably the band i've listened to probably most is the baboon show because i'm on a baboon show kick but uh this album baboon show didn't have a new album this year i would sure wish they did i would like to have had that on my top 10 list but they have not put out they put out maybe one or two songs this year both of them were great songs but bitch queens not a great name for a band, a little bit gay sounding, but it's probably gay in, in like a uh, ironic way. This album is fan effing tastic. I'm going to play my favorite song on the album and probably my favorite song of the year. This song is called The Worst Thing from Bitch Queens. <laughs> oh, hold on before I play. I might as well. We're an hour and 50 minutes in this. Before I get into this, thank you for listening to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, friends. That was my top 10 of 2021. Hope you hope you enjoyed it. Hope you don't think it was a cop-out because I did uh, had so, so many ties. I'm not Eddie Trunk. I don't have as many rules. Only rule is I, it's got to be a full-length album. I don't put covers albums in, in my top 10. I don't put live albums in my top 10. I don't put EPs into my top ten, which is why I don't have Bridget West Lockdown in there. Because I know a couple I know at least one person had Bridget West's new album Lockdown, which I really like a lot. And she looks so gorgeous on this cover too. She's I love Bridget West, but she's not qualified because it's an EP. Baboon show not qualified because they didn't put out a full length. So the, the qualifications, it's got to be a studio album, it's got to be a new album, and it can't be a, um, an album of all covers, and it can't be a live album. So that's why Bitch Queens is number one. Thank you for listening to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, friends. This was exhausting putting this list together. Let's do it again next year. Well, we'll see. I have a feel, Hope I'm hoping that 2022 will have some uh, more... Great albums. We probably won't have an album from The Darkness. We probably won't have another Cheap Trick album. We may, we'll probably have another album from Ginger at some point. Uh, probably won't have another Bitch Queens. We'll, we will have the uh, uh, La Parata. Is that La Parata? La Parata. What's it called? Yeah, something like that. Uh, Warner Hodges Band. <laughs> That album's great. Too bad that album's not out yet. It would have been in the. It would have been in my top three probably. All right. Thank you for listening, friends. Rockandrollgeek.com is where you can find this show. Send me an email. Rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. If you agree with me on this top ten list, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com with the subject line Butler. You have the best taste in music. I love you. You are so great. I'm gonna donate more. Put that in the subject line. Rock and roll geek at gmail.com. If you disagree with me, Butler, how dare you not put the new Dirty Honey in the top 10 list? You suck. Eddie Trunk rules. Unsubscribe. Put that in the subject line, rock and roll geek at gmail.com. I'll talk to you soon, friends. Thank you for listening. Find me on the Facebook, RNR Geek. Find me on the Instagram, rock and roll geek. Don't ask. Find me on the Twitter, RNR Geek. Oh, you can't find me on TikTok. I'm sorry. And remember, friends, as the guy in The Black Crow said, rock and roll is about defiance, not compliance. Stick it to the men. All right, my number one album of 2021, The Bitch Queens, and my favorite song of 2021 is called The Worst Thing. I'll talk to you soon, friends. <laughs>
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. 